A samurai named Manji is killing people in a poor village, he finds a little woman named Maki who calls him, Big Brother, she's holding a ball of horse poop that she claims to be a rice ball, while they get cleaned up in a creek, a cloaked woman appears and she says Manji looks at Maki like she's his sin, she asks if it's his fault, he killed six men, finding out too late that the sixth man was her husband, he wanted to cut open his belly like a samurai should, but that would have left her alone. To die, the cloaked woman says that she's been alive for 800 years, and learned that it's easier if someone else makes the life or death decision for you. Maki runs a short distance away, only to be held by over 100 men, their leader explains that this samurai Manji has a price on his head, and they won't let him leave, Maki is released upon his request, but as she strolls past the leader, he slices her with his sword, she drops down, dead, Manji claims he's going to kill all of them, a huge battle ensues, and he stays alive much longer than the average person. He's shot by arrows, his hand is cut off, his eye is sliced, even with his wounds. He succeeds at killing all the men, leaving just the leader, they both stab each other, and with a few more slashes, the leader collapses, Manji stumbles over to Maki's body, and the cloaked woman appears over him. He begs her to stab him to death, she says that he is self-centered to only wish for death after killing so many men, she introduces herself as Yabikuni, and she pulls out sacred bloodworms born of the Holy Lama, she claims they will live inside him. She pushes them into a large gap she made in his chest, and his hand reattaches to his wrist. Fifty years later, we see a martial arts instructor named Master Asano, watching his daughter sword fight. His daughter, Rin, is passionate and talented. At dinner, Rin's mother told her that she'd hoped she would grow up to partake in all the joys of womanhood, not so much swords. Suddenly, they hear a loud bang. Asano goes outside and finds a group of fighters standing together. Their leader introduces them as the Itoryu. They use any kind of weapon, only aiming to win, Asano clarifies that. They're the group that's been destroying schools and dojos around the area, their leader, Master Anatsu, says that they will destroy everything in order to unite them in one, he tells Asano that he will either join them, or be destroyed. Master Asano objects, telling them they're crazy, Anatsu tells him they've already killed all of his disciples, and he is the only one left, they believe in fighting one against one, hearing this, Rin's father draws his sword, but he is killed quickly by the Itori leader, they also capture his wife, leaving only their daughter, as they take her mother. Rin is sheltered by a monstrous looking man that appears to have covered bodies attached to his sides, he tells her to cover her ears, unless. She wants to be haunted by the sounds for years to come. After the tragic night, Rin stands in a graveyard practicing her sword skills, Yabikuni appears and asks her who sleeps there, she tells her it is her father, Asano, she asks where her mother is, and Rin says her mother disappeared the night her father was killed, Yabikuni asks her what she will do now, and the girl says she will find her mother and kill all of the Itoriyu, the cloaked woman laughs at her, Rin says it is why she trains every day and starts walking away, before she leaves. Yabikuni tells her to hire a bodyguard from a specific town, a specific man named Manji that will never die. Rin searches for him, even sleeping under a bridge, eventually she comes upon him by a small shack, she asks if he is Manji, he mistakes her for Maki, and she does look just like her, she begs him to help her track down and fight the Itoriyu, because she doesn't know where they are, at first he refuses, claiming he can't kill just because someone asks him to, she tells him Anatsu killed her father and took her mother, he says that in her mind, Anatsu is evil, and she is the good one, he says. That is awfully convenient, she says it's not about good or evil, she wants them dead, she's desolate, and there were so many of them, he asks if she'd be willing to give him anything in return. She hesitates, but starts to undress, he stops her because she's just a kid, she's about to leave when he stops her again and says there are bandits out there, so he'll walk her back to where she's staying, during their travels, the monstrous looking man that shielded Rin while her mother was captured appears by her, quoting a poem, Rin says that he's been leaving love letters for her for two years now, and he's driving her crazy, he introduces himself as Sabato, and says ever since that night, she's been on his mind, Manji steps out and begins fighting Sabato eagerly, Manji is stabbed in the chest, and Rin cries out. Sabato approaches Rin, touching her face, but Manji's body is healing, he stands up behind Sabato and stabs him in the back, Rin is relieved, but starts crying, Manji says it's not the time to cry, and she must start training tomorrow, she agrees, but then he sits with his back to her and offers her a shoulder to cry on for a short while. Master Anatsu is being questioned by a man that went to great lengths to find him, Anatsu tells him that only the schools that aim to become powerful deserve to be called swordsmen, the man tells him that he wishes to start a fencing school only for the officials of the shogunate, he asks Master Anatsu if he and the Itoriyu swordsmen would serve as instructors for the school, Anatsu agrees, but only if his conditions are met, the first being that the school be named after Itoriyu, the second. 
Being that he is appointed as head of the academy, the man says he must be granted time to return to the Council of Elders and ask if this is acceptable. After he leaves, one of Anatsu's men returns with the news of Sabato's death, Anatsu asks how this could have happened, questioning if it was Asano's daughter, seeking revenge, the men say that it's impossible, Sabato was one of their best men, Anatsu tells them all to be vigilant, this is an important time for them. Rin is visiting with a sword maker, when she spots the very same sword that belonged to her father, one of Anatsu's men enters to retrieve the sword, Rin is careful not to show her face, she returns to Manji, explaining what she saw, Manji tells her to stay put, and he heads out to find the man with her father's sword, it doesn't take long to find him, the man says introductions don't matter, because Manji is going to die, a fight ensues. As it appears the man is winning, he starts giving Manji sword lessons, lesson 1, blocking is 80% of winning, when Manji falls into sinking mud, he says lesson 2, know the land and surroundings, he stabs Manji straight through the chest, but Manji stabs him, 2, the man is stunned as he watches Manji pull the long sword out of his chest, he watches the bloodworms heal the wound, Manji tells him he isn't the only hero of this complex story, and asks what his name is, Taito tells him. Manji returns to Rin and gives her back her father's sword, she thanks him, he accidentally calls her Maki, so he explains that was his sister, but she died years ago, he tells Rin that memories have a way of giving power, Rin starts calling him big brother just like Maki did, but he doesn't appreciate it, they go into a small village for tea, but split up while Manji studies a map with different dojo locations circled, a monk approaches him and says he knows the location of the man the two of them seek, Anatsu, if Manji answers correctly, he might tell him where he is, Manji draws his sword, holding it up to the monk's throat, and asks how he knew he wasn't traveling alone. The monk removes his face covering and introduces himself as Shizuma Aiku, a swordsman of the Ito Ryu, Aiku asks him to team up with him, so that they may kill Anatsu, Manji asks if Taito, the man he left to die, told them about his healing powers, Aiku ignores the question, simply saying that although he holds no grudge against Anatsu, it would be wise of him to team up with the man that cannot die, Manji puts away his sword, saying he'll let him live, but doesn't accept his proposal, Aiku is disappointed, gets up slowly, but quickly draws his sword to stab Manji, he misses, and they only fight a bit longer before Manji stabs him in the back, Aiku drops to the ground face down. Rin and other bystanders approach, but Aiku shockingly stands up again, telling Manji that they should have a better understanding of each other, Manji asks, she got you, too, referring to Yabikuni, Aiku pulls the sword out of his back and tells Manji he'll forget the answer he just gave him, so he has time to think about it, Manji and Rin start walking back to the little shack, but on the way, they notice how badly he's bleeding, his body's injuries over the years are bleeding and ripping apart, Rin is concerned as Manji drops to the ground in agony, he explains that Aiku must have had poison on his sword to weaken the bloodworms, despite his objections, Rin runs off to get help, Aiku is waiting in the woods and kidnaps her. He explains to her that he needs a man just like him, but perhaps she would like to qualify, he cuts her tongue, then his hand, he tells her to lick it so that the worms migrate to her body, she's about to, but he tells her he only wishes it worked that way, he says he must leave this life, suddenly, Manji knocks down the wall where they are hiding, he tells him to come outside so they may fight to the death. As they slash and stab each other with many swords, Rin cuts herself free and discovers the disturbing and bloody scene, Aiku pulls swords out of himself, claiming dying is hard, he says the poison he found could kill even them, if enough was used, Manji is reminded of Rin, and says he cannot die, so the fight continues, resulting in Aika's death, as he's pinned to the tree and filled with bloodworm poison, his body falls apart, Aika's last words are that he's tired of being alive. The Council of Elders agrees to Anatsu's wishes, Anatsu then announces that he will pay a visit to Mount Takao, the man is confused, so Anatsu hands him a letter, it's from Ibain Kensui, head of the Shinkito Ryu, this is the group that used to be official instructors to the shoguns, the leader, Kensui, wishes to become one of the Ito Ryu instructors before his impending death, he believes he could help prepare people to fight against the upheavals coming to the land, Master Anatsu says that. He and Master Kensui believe Ito Ryu is the only school up to the task, that all other schools will have to follow their lead, just then, Anatsu is informed that three more of their warriors have been killed, in response, Anatsu tells them to be sure they stay close together while he summons help. Rin's mother is dressed beautifully, being kept as a pleasure girl, she visits with Anatsu. Manji's wounds still haven't closed, but he's alive, he says sake is the best cure, as they start walking back, a woman playing an instrument interrupts them, and asks Manji to come with her, he tries to resist, but curiosity gets the better of him and he follows her, Rin heads home, wondering what he saw in that old hag. When they're out of sight from everyone, the woman reveals that she's ready to sword fight, and her name is Otono Tachibanamaki, 
She explains that she's pledged as a warrior to Master Anatsu, leader of the Itoriyu, she says she will remove him, because he stands in her master's way, she says that because 13 men have been killed, he deserves death, Manji is confused and says he hasn't killed that many, but Maki won't hear it, she begins her attack. She disappears after wounding him, and just as he leans against a wall, she stabs him through it, twisting her sword before pulling it back out, she disappears again, only to show up above him and cut off both his arms, she suddenly looks very distraught, and she admits that she forgets herself when she fights, Manji asks what she's waiting for, and encourages her to finish the job, Maki goes on to say that when the fighting stops and she realizes what she's done, she feels nothing but grief. She says she questions if what Anatsa wants is even the right thing. Just then, Rin shows up and stands between Manji and Maki, wielding a sword, Maki asks her how she can live with herself, and if the revenge she seeks is worth all the death, Rin says that she swore on her father's grave that she would avenge him, she doesn't appreciate killing, but she promised him, and she doesn't know if there's any such thing as right or wrong if it's for the people you love, Maki looks away, and says she cannot kill a child, she tells Manji to always take care of Rin, and walks away. Manji is relieved that she left, but as his arms reattach and the bloodworms work slowly, he tells Rin never to defend him or get involved again, if she does, he'll quit. Maki admits to Master Anatsa that she could not kill Manji or Rin, she says she's not fit to stand by his side, Anatsa doesn't see her, he only finds her letter and severed ponytail. Rin wakes up and finds Manji by the fire, having cooked breakfast for them, he tells her he has something to do, so she must train alone today, Rin notices that his bleeding has stopped. Manji leaves flowers at Maki's grave. Rin discovers Master Anatsu in the woods, practicing his sword fighting, she says he will die now, and she throws knives at him, he blocks them, and she struggles to pick up the weapon he wielded easily, he picks it up and says it was his grandfather's axe, he says Rin's great-grandfather banned his grandfather for using it, because it wasn't a sword, he says that's why he killed her father, Rin is confused, so he explains further. Each of their grandfathers were competing to be licensed by the Mutenikai Ryu, one night, they were attacked by bandits and Rin's grandfather killed four of them, while his own grandfather killed nine, although Anatsu's grandfather killed more bandits than Rin's grandfather, it was her great-grandfather that was the leader of the Mutenikai Ryu, Anatsu's grandfather believed that was why he chose not to license him, but his own son, Rin's grandfather, instead, Rin's great-grandfather tried to tell. Anatsu's grandfather that it was not because Takayuki was his son, but because they wielded swords, while Anatsu's grandfather wielded an axe, he said it was not their style, and barbaric, Anatsu's grandfather was very angry, claiming he used the axe well to defend the master himself. Anatsu says that his grandfather came to a pitiful end, and no one cared, he walks away, and Rin asks him why he won't kill her, he says they're too similar, she calls him crazy, and he just looks at her, asking if she really is that different from himself. Rin returns to Manji, and he knows something is up, even though she won't tell him anything. Lord Habaki wants to host a banquet for the instructors of the Itoriyu, but Anatsu says he needs to go to MT, Takao, the man tells him he should bring a bodyguard, since many people want to kill him, a spy is listening from behind a wall. The next day, Rin and Manji are walking in town when they spot a man part of the Itoriyu, Manji follows him, eventually, the man turns around and says he thought he'd been smelling shit stuck to his ass, however, it's not Manji, it's another man, he kills the Itoriyu man easily, but then he's approached by Manji who's upset that he's been killing people in his name. The man introduces himself as Shira, of the Magai Ryu, he takes them back to his hideout with others, explaining that Anatsu may not know he has more than one enemy if they stick together, Jichi has round glasses, and Hayakirin has blonde hair, there are others that aren't there, Manji agrees to team up with them, and they show him a letter that explains Anatsu will be traveling to MT, to cow and drag. It isn't difficult to find the very tall woman traveling with a wrapped up axe, Manji was skeptical of how easy it was to find him, and he was right to be suspicious, it wasn't Anatsu, not only that, but Shira and others turn on them, Shira's about to rape the woman they mistook for Anatsu when Rin tries to stop him, he punches her three times, warning her not to speak again, she speaks and tries to stop him again, but before he can cut her, his hand is sliced off by Manji, he runs back to the village. Manji scolds Rin for risking her life, he says he didn't get like this because he wanted to, he says he killed an official on the orders of his superior, he was told this man was getting rich off of oppressing people, but that turned out to be a lie, the man he killed was actually about to inform on Manji's own superior for corruption and horrific acts he committed, so Manji killed his superior and his bodyguards, but one of those bodyguards turned out to be Maki's husband, after that, she went mad with grief, after long months of traveling and killing anyone in their way, Maki was killed, so Manji expected to finally die as she did, to get rest, however, he was wrong, 
he wouldn't die the day or any day soon because Yabakuni got a hold of him. Manji buys something from a little shop in town, but he's being by Ji Chi and Hayek Yurin, mean. Behind. Ji Chi and Hayek Yurin ask where Shira is, Manji simply says that their alliance is off, they're surprised, but Manji says he knows they're only after the Ito Ryu for money, 1 5 Ryo for a nobody, 30 Ryo for an Atsu. He also points out that since they had really good sake in a nice place, it was probably given to them by the government. Ji Chi says it isn't just for money, they're under death sentences and must do what they say or die. Manji says that the Shogunate is never going to team up with the Ito Ryu. He says it'll all fizzle out before Rin gets her revenge. Hayakuren asks why he's still in it then, and he says that doesn't concern her and walks away. He gets back at the shack to find that Rin's note asks him to forgive her, while saying that she will continue her journey alone, she says she knows she does not have the strength to defeat Anatsu, but she doesn't want to take advantage of him any longer, she asks if he only took her bodyguard job in hopes of finally being able to die, she says she doesn't want to see him die, so she cannot be with him anymore. Anatsu finally arrives at the top of Mount Takao, only to find that Master Ibain Kensui has changed his mind about joining the Itoryu Academy, Anatsu is furious and demands to know why, but Kensui refuses to answer, as Anatsu leaves, he is surrounded by at least 100 armored men, who say that his ego has grown too big, and he must die, the fight begins. Lord Habaki has betrayed all of the Itoryu and they are poisoned at the banquet, Anatsu finds Rin on the path down the mountain, and warns her to flee before she gets caught up in a fight. Manji is ambushed by three people who believe he is part of the now outlawed Itoryu, he's pinned, and struggling to be free, suddenly Yabakuni is beside him, she asks him why he struggles if he only wishes for death, he calls her an old cow and dismisses her, she asks him if Rin's life matters more to him than his own wish for death, and her question gives him the strength to heal faster and break free. Anatsu and Rin are standing side by side when they are surrounded by at least 500 men, some on horseback, Lord Habaki tells Anatsu that the Itoryu are all dead, since he's their leader, he should choose the death that suits him, instead, he says that his ambition is alive and well, as they all run towards him with weapons drawn, Rin stops them, she says that they shouldn't call themselves samurais because they're surrounding one man unfairly, then she looks at Anatsu, and asks him who he thinks he is, he is only one man, one of the soldiers attempts to attack Anatsu Kajihisa is standing behind her, to which she confirms that he is, he asks how crazy she has to be to defend the man she wants revenge on, she says she's not protecting him, but Manji interrupts her to ask who she wants him to kill, she says anyone who's trying to kill her, he agrees, then Lord Habaki tells the crowd to kill Manji and Rin, the battle begins, and Rin survives half. The battle by standing close enough to Manji, Anatsu is fighting for himself. Soon, Rin notices that Manji is bleeding profusely, not healing fast if at all, Manji presses on, continuing to slaughter the crowd, Rin and him stand back to back, pausing to make eye contact with Anatsu, who has up to this point, kept his blue robes clean, blood starts splattering when he gets stabbed and slashed, he's losing energy just as Maki appears to aid his fight, they stand back to back. Rin throws her knives to help Manji, but one of them stabs him in the back, she apologizes, but he keeps the knife for later, they get upstairs in the building as the fight continues, only for them to jump out the second story window, Shira, with his missing hand and now white hair, appears on horseback, he kicks Rin in the stomach and carries her away, Manji screams after her, but can't escape the men surrounding him. After all the men are killed, Maki is shot several times before she manages to kill eight more men, she dies, and Lord Hakai challenges Anatsu, Manji catches up to Rin and Shira, Rin is tied up, and Shira has a makeshift weapon for a new hand, he orders Manji to drop his weapons, Manji has a flashback of the first man to tell him that, right before he killed Maki, Manji worries the same thing will happen again, except this time, he remembers, he has the knife Rin threw in his back, he drops his weapons, but then he throws the knife to cut Rin free, Shira doesn't realize this at first, and tries to slash open her stomach, when he sees she's gone, he turns to run after Manji, he tells him he can still kill Shira unarmed, they tumble down the mountainside, but before Shira falls to his death, he swears he will return to kill Manji in the next life. Anatsu kills Lord Hakai right before he notices Manji pulling his weapons out of the dead, Anatsu addresses him as the 100 killer and says it's thanks to him that he's still alive, Manji says he should be thanking her, too, pointing to Maki's dead body, they have a moment of silence, Anatsu says he'll be leaving, but Manji says he doesn't ever want to see Anatsu walk away again, so Anatsu says it would be better for him to kill Manji now, lest he worry about
Suddenly, Manji gets in a really effective blow, and it's clear he's going to win. He pauses before killing Anatsu and hands the sword to Rin. She points the sword at him, but she hesitates to kill him, so he gets up to leave. As Anasta slowly walks away, Rin screams his name and runs toward him, followed closely by Manji, in the blink of an eye. Manji sacrifices himself to Anatsu's sword so that Rin can stab him through the stomach without being killed herself, Anatsu says he'll be waiting for him in hell, Manji says he's sorry, but he can't die before Rin so it'll be a while, Anatsu falls over, dead, and Manji pulls the sword out of himself, suddenly, he collapses, dead, Rin shakes him and cries his name, saying he lied to her, saying he said he would live until she died, she cries over him and grieves, calling him brother, but only until Manji says, it's big brother, and opens his eyes.